Have you ever wondered how powerful Smite's gods would actually be in real life and how a normal human like ourselves would fare against them? Well, this video is for you. From calculating the true strength of Hercules to how thick Rama's legs must be to leap into the sky during his ultimate, this series will answer all the questions you never had about Smite's gods. Today, we become legends. Hercules is obviously strong, we all know that, but have you ever wondered exactly how strong based on what we see him do in game? Throwing gigantic boulders and having the ability to shoulder charge almost anything several feet back successfully makes me think he's definitely been hitting the gym. The only things he can't driving strike are objectives, towers, titans, etc, as well as Jormungandr because he's simply too massive. So to get a sense of scale for the boulder Hercules throws in his ultimate, we first need an anchor point that is the same measurements in real life as it is in Smite's world. Yep, you guessed it, it's minion time. Since the minions in Smite are meant to be mortal worshippers of the gods, we can assume that one minion in Smite is the average height of a human being. Since all minions in Smite are male, we'll use the global average for male height, which is 5 feet 7.5 inches or 171 centimeters. We'll round this to 170 centimeters for neatness. Using this, we can estimate the size of everything else in the Smite universe, including Hercules' gigantic boulder that he can throw several feet in the air. Comparing Hercules to a minion, we get that he's roughly 1.5 times the size of a human being, standing at an impressive 255 centimeters or 8 foot 4. But now comes the important part, using this data to calculate the size of Hercules' excavated boulder. Since we now know the minions are always 170cm, we can take any scene from Smite with minions in it and just scale the ruler to the size of a minion and call that a 170cm. This of course has to adjust each time because of camera angles and distance to the camera and stuff like that, but as long as we adjust the minion ruler each time, the ratios will allow us to calculate size for anything in the screenshot. From this image, I estimated the boulder's diameter to be approximately 5 minions long, that's 850 centimeters or 8.5 meters. As we all hopefully remember from high school maths, volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so to get the radius we just half the diameter from earlier, so 425 centimeters or 4.25 meters. Plug these numbers in and we get a volume of 321.56 cubic meters of rock that Hercules is throwing at you. To put that number in perspective, that's like him throwing 2000 bathtubs worth of rock all at you at once. But that's the other key factor here in how much damage this boulder will do, the material it's made out of. Each material has a different density, basically the amount of stuff it can pack into any given space. Keep in mind that the type of rock will change in density. Sandstone, for example, has a density of 2.4 grams per cubic centimeter, whereas granite's density is slightly higher at 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Since the rock looks most like sandstone to me, I'll be assuming that's what it's made of for the calculations. So taking our volume of 322 cubic meters and multiplying it by the density of sandstone, which will change into kilograms per cubic meter instead of grams per cubic centimeter to match our volume units, we get 322 times 2400, that's 772,800 kilograms of pure rock Hercules is throwing at you. Cabracan is hella jealous hitting you with just two cars. Hercules can throw the equivalent of almost 600 cars at you with ease. You might think 600 cars is a bit of a ridiculous estimate given how small the boulder actually looks in game, but two things in Smite are working against us here. Number one is that we as humans are minion size, so anything in the smite world like created by the gods like this kind of boulder will be scaled up slightly to match the gods. As we calculated earlier, the boulder throne is actually five times the height of a human, much larger than a car. The other thing working against us here is that the boulder is made of pure rock ripped directly from the earth. Something like a car has a lot of empty space as well as lighter construction materials like aluminium that aren't literally solid rock. So what would it feel like to get hit by a super dense boulder of pure sandstone that weighs as much as 600 cars? Well, using another classic high school math equation of course, F equals MA is force equals mass times acceleration. Given the boulder takes around 800 milliseconds to make impacts from a max range throw, and the boulder travels roughly 3 Hercules' length forward, we can assume that acceleration is 7.65 meters divided by 0.8 seconds, which gives us 9.56 meters per second squared. Plug this into F equals MA when we already know the mass, and the force applied to the boulder by Hercules comes out at 7.39 million newtons of force. To put this in perspective, the Statue of Liberty weighs in at 125 tons, the boulder was calculated at 772 tons. So Hercules could throw the Statue of Liberty around 6 times further than he throws his boulder in Smite. I think it's safe to say that if the Statue of Liberty casually came flying at you, you're gonna have a bad time. 
But that's only one way to calculate Herc's strength. Sure, he can rip 700 ton boulders from the ground and throw them several meters upwards, but he can also shoulder charge most gods and monsters from smite and knock them back pretty far. Surely that carries some weight in terms of his strength. Well, to figure out his absolute peak performance when driving striking, we first have to figure out the largest thing in smite that he can possibly push with the ability. Jormungandr and Cthulhu both come to mind, but there's a problem with each of them that makes them not suitable for this analysis. For Yorm, it's pretty obvious. He can't be pushed. This sets a nice size limit on what Hercules is technically capable of. However big Yorm is, he theoretically shouldn't be able to push anything with more mass than the World Serpent. As for Cthulhu, the only reason I can't use him despite being pushable when not ulting is that it's going to be almost impossible to get an accurate estimate for his mass. His size is easy, we just use the minions again and calculate it, but Eldritch lore is weird and Cthulhu is not made from stuff of our world. In fact, based on my limited research, there isn't really even a consensus on what Cthulhu is made of and how big he even is in Eldritch myth. So with so many unknowns, I decided to cut Cthulhu from consideration. For all we know, he might be made from some ultra-light element that allows him to be pushed around by mere demigods like this guy. So the next biggest thing Hercules can push that's not an objective, Yorm or Cthulhu. Well, discounting CC immune gods of course, so stuff like an ulting the mana, we arrive at Sylvanas, or more accurately for this video, his Trion, Grover. It's also worth noting that Kepri and Fafnir in dragon form are of similar size to Sylvanas and also pushable, but Sylvanas is larger. Comparing him to the minions again, we get that Grover is roughly two minions tall and one minion wide on his trunk. We'll get to the branches and leaves in a little bit later. Much like the stone type affects the density of Herc's boulder, the tree type affects the wood density for Grover as well. For this one, we'll assume he's an oak tree, specifically a southern red oak based on his leaves in game. This wood type specifically has a density of around 740 kilograms per cubic meter, definitely less than the sandstone we threw earlier, which comes in at 2,700 kilograms per cubic meter. So there's basically no way to accurately determine the volume of Sylvana slash Grover in game, given their shapes vary so much. However, Grover does measure up pretty nicely for the main body and trunk to just be a cuboid of wood. This cuboid is two minions high, one minion wide, and one minion deep. At 1.7 meters, that means the volume of Grover's main body is around 10 cubic meters. Again, since it's near impossible to calculate the volume of his remaining branches and leaves, I'll be using a figure from silver.org that estimates slightly over half of any oak tree is usually branch wood compared to trunk. So we're going to take it conservatively and double that volume that we just calculated for his trunk for a total of 20 cubic meters. Multiplying that by the density of southern red oak wood, 740 kilograms per cubic meter, we can deduce that Hercules is capable of pushing a 14.8 ton tree backwards about 4 meters. For context, that's about 50 grizzly bears at once that Hercules can just run into and send flying backwards. Given the average human is around 60 kilograms and Grover weighs 14,800 kilograms, we can use a ratio to estimate how far Hercules could theoretically launch you if he hit you with the same force he hits Grover. 14,800 divided by 60 gives us Hercules pushing you around 246 times further than Grover with the same force of impact. Meaning Herc would push you almost a kilometre backwards if he hit you with the full force of Driving Strike. Well, that is assuming the impact doesn't just vaporise you on the spot or cause an explosion, which is probably the more likely thing to happen physics-wise. But hey, Hercules seems pretty strong to me. But that's all I got for the first episode. This is of course something completely new on the channel and not something I've tried before, so let me know if you like it and what improvements I could make going forward. I have some cool ideas to explore, like how powerful Rama's legs would have to be to jump into the sky like he does, the actual speed Mercury moves at during his ultimate and what would happen if he ran into someone at that speed, A-Train style, and a few others. But if you have any ideas of your own that I could explore the real life equivalents to in Smite, then leave them down below. But other than that, I'll catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.